Good morning. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming again today for coffee. It's time for Coffee with Pete. This is Pastor Pete at Abundant Life Church in Lakewood, Washington. It's the 22nd of September, 2021, and uh, it's a pleasure to be together again and to, to break some bread, have some coffee, enjoy some company and conversation. Uh, today, we're going to take another look at some of the some of the themes, maybe a, a theme or a thread that gets pulled through the Gospel of John. Been studying there a lot lately, and so just want to bring bring something to light to you. So grab your coffee and your Bible, and here we go. The Gospel of John, uh, we've been studying through it verse by verse, chapter by chapter, and as you've heard me say many times. You got to put it into a bigger context and so i've got a thing today i just want to outline for you it's kind of a common thing you've probably you could probably read many articles about it and, and this is, comes off of a list uh lists of scriptures that have things in common are really useful well in the gospel of john jesus makes seven statements that begin with the phrase or with the words i am um, and each of those uh, i am proclamations um, is useful to further understand our uh, for us to understand Jesus's ministry in this world, uh, why he came, what he did, uh, and even him making those statements. As, as you'll see in a moment, it's wrapped around him actually taking actions on behalf of people. Um, so it gives us a good connection of understanding his nature, his ministry, and also his connection, the link he has that Jesus has with the God of the Old Testament, the revelation of God in the Old Testament. Um, so begin there. In the Old Testament, uh, you remember the story of the burning bush and how, how God was there with Moses and said to Moses, go free my people. And Moses says, who shall I tell them is sending me? And God reveals uh, his name because Moses says, who shall I send? What's the name of who? What is your name? Who, who shall I tell him? And God says, tell them I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. <laughs> That's in Exodus 3, verse 14. And so in Judaism, I am, that phrase, I am, is unquestionably understood to be a name of God. Whenever Jesus made an I am statement in which he claimed attributes of God, he was identifying himself as God. Uh, in fact, this be maybe a study for another day, the, the the, the Jews went to great lengths, and even our Bibles today reflect great lengths that went to not actually saying the words I am, but, but making a portrayal of that through Yahweh or Lord. If you read some of your uh, Bibles now in the Old Testament, whenever you see all capitals, the word Lord, that's a substitute for Yahweh, which is a substitute for the actual words that portray I am. So here we go. Seven times Jesus metaphorically made an I am statement in John's gospel. And I'm gonna give you a little context for what each one of those is. The first one is um, in the chapter, chapter six of John, Jesus says it four times, he refers to himself as the bread of life. And so in this whole chapter, he's establishing a pattern that, that continues throughout the whole gospel. He makes a statement about who he is and he backs it up with something that he does. Or he does something and then backs it up with a statement of who he is. But he combines those together. Those are always in conjunction. And in this case, um, he says, I'm the bread of life. And he says it just after he feeds the 5,000 in the wilderness. Um, and at the same time, he makes additional statements. It's worth reading further on. But he makes additional statements contrasting himself with Moses and what Moses did for their ancestors. And Jesus says in verses 49 and 50, he said, our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. So that's it. I'm the bread of life, he says. Uh -huh. Secondly, the second thing is, is I am the light of the world. And this is uh, found in chapter eight uh, and nine, verse eight, verse 12 and nine, verse five. Jesus says in this I am statement uh, that he says this, I am the light of the world, right before he heals a man who was born blind. Right before healing this man, he says, I am the light of the world. So Jesus not only says he's the light, but he proves it. And his words and his actions echo what is in Genesis 1-3 when God said, let there be light, and there was. 
But Jesus says, I'm the light, and then he gives light to the man born blind, literally. The next statement is from John 10, verses 7 and 9. Jesus says this about himself. He says, I am the door. This, this I am statement is stressing that no one enters the kingdom of heaven by any other means than Christ himself. And this passage is uh, brought out in the context, really, in an imagery of a sheepfold. And in a sheepfold, what would be done was multiple sides with rocks, uh, branches, trees, fencing of some kind would be built to protect the sheep, to keep out any kind of predators, except for the door. And the door commonly was where the shepherd would sleep. The shepherd would station himself and he would say, and here he's saying, I'm the door. That was common practice for shepherds. And Jesus is saying, I'm the door. If anybody wants to come into the kingdom of God, you have to come through the door and I am the door. He goes on to say, uh, well, he says also in this, is truly, truly I say to you that he who enter, does not enter by the sheep, the sheep oh, let me start again. He who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. So you have no right to be there. And uh, you're just following the traits of the enemy of God. The next state, I am statement is found in John chapter 10. And it's stated again more than one time, 11 and 14 of the verses. And he says, I am the good shepherd. So continuing with this same metaphorical quality of uh, a sheep needing shepherd, um, here he's saying, that Jesus is saying, I'm a shepherd. I'm a good shepherd. I have great love and tremendous care for those that I have been given responsibility for. He's the one who is willingly protecting his flock, even to the point of death. And those, those that, to that death, that's outlined in verses 11 and 15. When Jesus calls himself the good shepherd, he's unmistakably taking upon himself one of the titles of God in the Old Testament. When the psalm, and you know this psalm, 23, 1, chapter 23, verse 1 of the psalms, the Lord is my shepherd. Jesus is saying, I am your good shepherd. Okay, the next one, John eleven twenty five. 25, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus made this I am statement immediately before raising Lazarus from the dead. Now, you know, maybe you remember that whole story. Maybe you remember only part of it. Uh, Jesus, Jesus is told that his friend has died and he waits but then on the way there finally going after three days on the way there he's met by mary who is weeping and sobbing and mourning and said if only you had been here if only you had been here i know you would have prevented this and jesus says i am the resurrection and the life and so we see again jesus is teaching he's not just doing empty talk he's not just giving a lesson hey remember this someday it'll come in handy He's making a claim, and then he immediately substantiates it with his action. So his teachings are always connected to current moments. Just like in our life, we have the Bible. We can open it and find the teachings that are relevant to our current moments. So, uh, you know, in Revelation 1.18, it says that Jesus holds the keys to death and the grave. So in raising Lazarus from the dead, Jesus showed how he can actually fulfill the promise of God that was given to ancient Israel. In Isaiah, there's a statement. It said, God's dead shall live and their bodies shall rise. So you see, apart from Jesus, there is neither resurrection nor eternal life. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. And his actions back that up. And then, and then we have in John 14, 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Maybe one of the most famous statements Jesus makes about himself and that we hold on to. And, and I think it's precious. It's, it's amazing to think about. It's a powerful statement. Christ, it's so packed with so much meaning. Um, he's not merely saying, hey, there's a lot of ways. You know, we hear this in our modern world. I remember hearing this for the last 30, 40, 50 years. There are a lot of ways to heaven. Um, perhaps you can get to the gates of heaven. I don't know. I, I'm not, I don't want to stretch out that too far, but Jesus is very clear here. There's no real debate about what he's saying. He's not merely one way among many ways to God. He is the only way. Scripture said in Psalm 119, said the very essence of God's words is truth. The essence of, what, of God's words is truth. And Jesus is proclaiming that he is the truth. 
he's confirming his own identity as the word of God. Now, go back to John 1, 1. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was God, right? I mean, and he, it was with the word. And so, and I know I misquoted that terribly. In the beginning was the word. Jesus alone is the source of life. He's the creator and the sustainer. He's the one who holds this world together, and he's the giver of eternal life. I am the way, the truth, and the life, said Jesus. And then the final metaphorical uh, I am that Jesus gives, number seven on this list, is I am the true vine. This is in John 15, and it's uh, verses one and five. Again, stated multiple times. He's not... He's making sure people hear it more than once so that they can really grab hold of the meaning of what he's trying to get across. He does this with every single one of these I am statements. Here, in this part of the Gospel of John, Jesus is emphasizing that his life in him is, he is sustained through his power. It's sustained by being connected to the true vine. You will have power for life, for living today. If we're the branches and he's the vine, we will bear fruit because of the sustaining power that comes from the vine into us as the branches, and then the fruit will pour out. And we have that vital, important union with him. Um, if you're not joined with Christ, you can't have that power. You can seek it. You can emulate it. You can pretend you have it. You can, you can try to produce it in your own strength. But ultimately, the real fruit of the Christian life comes because we are attached to Christ, because he is the one who gives us the power and the, through his Holy Spirit. Now, there are two other places in the Gospel of John where Jesus makes an I am statement, but they're not metaphorical. Uh, they're declarations, actually, of his name. And in some ways, these are even more powerful in some ways. And they certainly um, they certainly got Jesus into more trouble. This is These were the statements that when these two were made were the times when uh, really, it was really significant to the Jews as the claims that Jesus was making, and it actually led to a lot of trouble for him. So he says, the first one uh, comes, the Pharisees are questioning him. What proof do you have that that uh, that you are somehow God, or that you're, are you greater? Are you declaring that you're greater even than Abraham? And Jesus says to them, uh, I'll tell you the truth. He says, before Abraham was born, I am. Now, the verbs used are in stark contrast. Before Abraham was, I am. And so there's no doubt that the Jews understood that Jesus was not trying to declare his age. Because they even go on to say, you're not even over 50 years old. And you're claiming to have known Abraham. He's not saying that. He says, I am. He's proclaiming his name. The same name of God, Yahweh. The same name, I am. I am has sent me. Jesus is saying, I am that I am. And so that's uh, that's huge. And, you know, so huge that even in the very next verse, verse 59 of that, of John 8, that's in John 8, 58 and 59, the Jews took up stones because they were going to kill Jesus for that statement because that was blasphemy in their mind that anybody would claim to be God. The second time that Jesus is applying this, uh, this name, uh, this name I am making this bold statement, comes in the Garden of Gethsemane. The mob came to arrest Jesus. And Judas came to betray him. Uh, uh, you know, they draw their swords. Peter's getting ready to fight, and eventually he does do a little bit of fighting. Uh, Jesus stops the whole moment, and he says, with authority, he says, Who have you come to find? Who do you seek? Who, who is it that you are after? And they said, We're looking for Jesus of Nazareth. And he replies, I, in our English versions, he says, I am he. This is John 18, verses 4 and 5. And then something strange happened. When Jesus says, I'm he, everybody fell down. They were just wiped out. Like the power of him actually just saying his name caused people to fall. And these were Romans, not even Jews. The power was so amazing. And so one way to think about this is that, and I even said it, our English translations have added he to the phrase I am to make it a little more readable. But the actual transcript, the actual uh, words there are simply, I am. Whom have you come to seek? Jesus of Nazareth. I am, he says. So he applies the covenant name of God to himself, and Jesus demonstrates his power over his foes. They fall down helpless. And he shows that his surrender to them 
was entirely voluntary. His sacrifice was entirely planned and voluntary. His love was unquenchable and he was determined to carry that out. So there you go. Uh, Jesus declaring I am, uh, the seven on the list, and then two more where he's basically saying his name, which is the name of God. So I leave you with that, friend. I don't have an answer for you. I have a, a little guideline. Maybe you'll go do a little bit more research on some of those same things. Maybe you'll say, I need God in my life today in a greater way. Who are you? And he'll say, I am. I am your all sustainer. I am everything you need. I bless you today, friends, in Jesus' name. I am. Amen.